Hello and welcome to Adelante Chicago. I'm Lourdes Duarte. Thank you for joining us. Bienvenidos. Well, as we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, a new man gets appointed by Mayor Emanuel to be the Deputy Chief of Staff for Education. His name is Arnie Rivera, has a connection to the Latino community. So the question, of course, becomes what will his appointment mean for you, the growing Latino community? So let's ask him that question. Arnie Rivera is here joining us today. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. All right, so let's start with Mayor Emanuel, and his focus has always been on early childhood education, mm -hmm. the importance of that to carry these kids through uh, to graduation mm -hmm. day, high school graduation. So I'm wondering what your role will be in all of this. How do you tackle that? Absolutely. So, um, you know, so my role as a Deputy Chief of Staff for Education is to manage the mayor's education platform from cradle to career. Mm -hmm. And obviously our early childhood work from birth to eight is something that's of paramount importance to the mayor and something that he always likes to tout. Uh, you know, he's, you know, he himself has dedicated $36 million out of his budget specifically to increase access and quality for early childhood options across the city. Um, from, a, from a Latino perspective, we know that our population is what's driving that growth. Mm -hmm. And, but at the same time, we also know that uh, aside from the demand issue, there's also a quality issue. Uh, you know, our children have unique needs, both culturally and linguistically, than the typical, you know, CPS students. So, uh, you know, we know that when we're catering our investments specifically to our, this community, we have to be very deliberate and intentional to match both the, quality, uh, the quantity and the quality. Yeah, and when you look at the studies, you see that Latino families are less likely to send their kid to an early childhood, you know, education program. And part of that is because they don't know about it. Absolutely. Uh, and maybe there aren't, uh, you know, programs programs or plans in place mm -hmm. to try to educate them mm -hmm. about how they work mm -hmm. because of the language barrier absolutely. and I'm sure you're finding that and what do you do to, to tackle that? No, absolutely. So and, and, and that's one of the things that you know we have heard is that it's you know the there are opportunities out there but how do we get to them? Mm -hmm. And I think you know we're taking a look at administration working with our partners to figure out how do we tailor an outreach and a, a messaging uh, strategy specifically to, you know, and, and not just Latino families, but other families sure. that are hard to reach, but with those areas where we know there is that demand, how can we make sure to get them signed up? So that's something that we're, we're continuing to work on. Okay. And, you know, we've seen in the last few years with these school closures, mm -hmm. it continues to be an issue sure. that is very controversial. Mm -hmm. Just this week, we had, you know, a number of people arrested mm -hmm. uh, over at the mayor's office or outside of the mayor's office because of the closure of Diet High School. So, mm -hmm. How have you seen this all transition and play out? Is it getting better in terms of kids adjusting to those closures and, and how this all is, is going to work? Sure. And, uh, you know, certainly uh, the, the noise was real and, and the passions that people had about um, having challenges with mm -hmm. the school closure process was real. And I certainly don't want to downplay that. And I certainly don't want to diminish it. It was very real for families. But I think the, the positive things that we have seen is that when you take a look at the academic indicator data that was released yet, uh, you know, that's been released over the past Which shows months, achievement is up, standardized testing, the scores mm -hmm. are up. Mm -hmm. uh, attendance is up. And specifically at those uh, schools that took in students for that, you know, that, uh, from schools that were closed, the trajectory was up. And I think you know, I attribute that to uh, despite the noise, you know, when a decision was made, once it was made, it was a collective, you know, coming together of we need, we now need to move on and do what's in the best interest of our students. Um, and I think that's what communities have done. Like I said, don't want to downplay the, you know, because the, it's not all good. You know, tension. these parents still say my kid has to walk, Absolutely. you know, a mile or half mm -hmm. a mile through a gang area, mm -hmm. gang infested area to get to school, and that's. It may mean better education for my child, but it doesn't mean better safety. Sure, no, and, and, and I think one of the things that, you know, one of the main um, programs that the mayor has been touting is Safe Passage, and, you know, uh, under his leadership, we have seen it over tr uh, triple, uh, you know, the number of Safe Passage mm -hmm. routes, and, and certainly he made a, a significant investment after the closings, and then, you know, with, with uh, the $10 million that we received from the governor a couple weeks ago, we're making uh, even greater uh, investments in that, so. Okay, uh, I know that this is a topic that we can talk about for a while, <laughs> but before we go, I want to sure. get a chance to get to know a little bit about sure. you because you are a Latino here mm -hmm. in Chicago. Absolutely. Just got appointed to a very high position within mm -hmm. the mayor's office and people are going to want to know a little bit more about you. You said you're from Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. You live here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. 
Give us give us some more background, some more flavor. Sure. So uh, you know, so I, I was born in Connecticut, and then I moved to Puerto Rico when I was six months old. Spent the first five years of my life there. I moved back to Connecticut and lived there uh, till I was of high school, uh, till I graduated high school. Um, Former teacher as well. Yes, absolutely. So uh, w w uh, came here to Northwestern University. Uh, loved it. Uh, really wanted to stay in Chicago, but had a really good job opportunity right out of college. Uh, went to New York for two years. Mm -hmm. Came back and, as you mentioned, I became a teacher. So I was yeah. a first grade teacher at Walt Disney Magnet School on the north side of Chicago. Uh, toughest three years of my life, uh, <laughs> at, but absolutely uh, most gratifying yeah. job I've ever had. Yeah. Um, did that for three years. Uh, ended up working at Central Office at CPS for six. Started off in the budget office and uh, worked there for four years, including a stint as a budget and, director. Yeah. And then my last two years uh, at uh, Central Office, I was a deputy, CE, uh, deputy chief of staff to both Jean-Claude Brizard and Barbara Bird Bennett. Long list of achievements. Thank you so much, Arnie. We wish you the best of luck and hope, hopefully you come back. Yeah. Th thank you.